In this video, I want to show how to model and solve the transportation problem with a package available in R called LPSolve. LPSolve is a package for linear programming and it's um, coded in C. It is available in R as a package and enables you to solve linear problems efficiently since it is coded in, in um, C. The RPSoft package can deal with continuous problems but can also solve integer problems as long as we are talking about integer pro um, uh, linear problems. The transport uh, problem or the transportation problem is a special form of a linear problem um, and you can find here a uh, mathematical formulation um, which is shown here. We have problem where we want to minimize the total sum of variable transportation costs in a world where we have a given set of suppliers and a given set of customers. X i j indicates the material flowing from supplier i to customer j and c i j indicates the variable transportation cost from supplier i to customer j. So if I sum up the product of those two variables across all um, customers and all suppliers. In this case, I have n customers and I have m suppliers. I will have the total sum of variable transportation costs. However, in order to state this problem, I need to consider some constraints. The first constraint is if I look at the outgoing material flows for a given supplier, so if I sum up across all the customers the total material flowing from this supplier to all of these customers. I cannot exceed the capacity of that supplier. So this is why this is a less than or equal to constraint. The second constraint is if I look at a given customer and I take um, and I sum up the ingoing material flow. So if I look at all the suppliers, in this case we have M suppliers, then this total sum of ingoing material flows must be at least equal to the demand of that customer. This is why this is a greater than or equal to constraint. And then there are some additional constraints like um, non-negativity. As well as in our case, the constraint, um, you could add it um, to this problem that it is a, um, it is basically an integer problem in this case um, in the way we model it, but we can also model it as a um, non-integer problem in fact, in this case, um, we are not explicitly telling um, the package that this is an integer problem. But you could explicitly tell the package or the functions provided by the package uh, which kind of variable you want to consider as an integer variable. It's also something I've been showing in another video. So you can see here I load the LPSoft package. Uh, and down here, I'm using the lp.transport function, which is a function specifically um, um, provided for modeling transportation problems and it needs a couple of parameters as inputs um, in order to be able to model and solve um, the transportation problem. We need to tell it the cost matrix which is basically for um, a matrix with uh, one row for each supplier and one column for each customer indicating the variable transportation costs from each supplier to every customer in a matrix. Then we need to indicate the direction of this problem. So is it a maximization minimization problem? And then we need to model our constraints. In the case of the lp.transport function, this is done by providing two sets of vectors. The first two vectors indicate the um, constraints um, concerned with these suppliers. So this parameter indicates the direction of the constraints for each supplier. This parameter indicates the constraint value for each supplier. So that would be the capacity for each supplier. And that would be the less than or equal to constraint for each supplier. I need to do the same for every customer. And that is what is done with the, those two parameters here. So for each customer, I have to indicate again the direction of the constraint. In our case, it's a greater than or equal to constraint. And I have to provide the value of the constraint 
which in this case is the demand of the given customer. And I provide here an example of um, how to model this problem, how to solve um, uh, a transportation problem. In this case, I'm, I'm creating an example where we have um, three suppliers and four customers. So in terms of a cost matrix, I have to provide a matrix which with one row for each supplier and one column for each customer. Means in this case, as I um, means in this case we have three suppliers and four customers. Um, I'm setting up here the variable transportation costs for every um, possible combination um, within this set of uh, suppliers and customers. The second parameter was the direction. In this case, it's a minimization problem since we want to minimize the uh, variable transportation costs. And now I'm um, working with the uh, these two parameters that um, were used for modeling the constraints in terms of the suppliers. So the first one was to um, provide a parameter that is basically a vector with the direction of each constraint for every supplier. In this case, I have three suppliers and the direction of the constraint is a less than or equal to constraint. And the values of a constraint in this case is um, a vector with um, the values 100, 300, and 400 means that custom or supplier one has a capacity of 100, supplier two has a capacity of 300, and supplier four has a capacity of um, supplier three has a capacity of 400. Now I have to do the same for every customer. Um, so I have to model the constraints concerned with every customer and the demand of every customer. And if you remember, this was done with the last two parameters here. So I have to provide a vector indicating the direction of the constraint for every customer. Um, in this case, it was a greater than or equal to constraint since I want to make sure the demand is satisfied. And um, this is why I'm having here a vector with four string entries indicating the, uh, the greater than or equal to constraints. And the last parameter was um, a parameter to which I map the uh, value of the customer constraints, which uh, basically, um, wh which are the demand um, values. So in this case, I have four customers and customer one has a demand of 100, customer two has a demand of 100, the third customer has a demand of 200, and the fourth customer has a demand of 400. And this is all the information I need to model this problem. I provided to the parameters that I explained before using the lp.transport function. It will return an lp-solve object, which is um, a model um, describing this problem and at the same time the solution to this problem. I can print or output this lp-solve object and I will get a printout indicating the optimal Piaget function value to this problem. And I can also explicitly output the optimal solution to this problem, which in this case is a matrix indicating the optimal material flows, considering the constraints described above. And um, as you can see, um, for supplier one, he should provide all of his capacity to customer two. Supplier two should provide um, two thirds of his capacity to customer three, one third to customer four. And the third um, supplier should um, provide one fourth um, of his capacity to customer one and three fourths to um, the fourth customer. So that would be the optimal solution to this transport problem um, and an example of how to solve it with LP solve and R. In the description of this video, you can find a link to the full coding example to this video. And um, that is a, a code I provided on my post, a blog post. And um, there you will also find a link to a PDF um, with some more exhaustive explanation of the transport problem.